Hello students, in the previous video, we discussed the numericals of index questions. Today we are going to solve the exercise numericals. See the first question. An athlete completes one round of a circular track of diameter 200 meter in 40 seconds. What will be the distance covered and the displacement at the end of 2 minutes 20 seconds? So the track is of circular shape and the diameter of the circular track it is given and it is given that in for one round of completing the circular track the time taken it is 40 seconds. So that means 40 seconds the rounds covered it is 1 that is the distance covered in 40 seconds it is 200 meter. What you have to find out is the distance covered and also the displacement in 2 minutes 20 seconds or 140 seconds. So what is given first we can write. So first one what will you write? What is the diameter? Diameter of the circular track it is given as 200 meter. As the diameter is given, we can find out the radius r. Radius half of the diameter that is 100 meter. Isn't it? Now, so the time taken to complete one round, it is 40 seconds. Otherwise, we can write the rounds completed in 40 seconds. Isn't it? The time taken to complete one round, it is 40 seconds. So we can rewrite the sentence like this. The rounds completed in 40 seconds. That we also we can write, no? That is one round. Isn't it? So we can find out the rounds that completed in. Therefore, the rounds completed in. 2 minutes 20 seconds, otherwise 140 seconds. How will you find out that? 140 divided by 40. 140 seconds divided by 40 seconds will give you 3.5 rounds. 3.5 rounds is completed by the athlete along the circular path in 140 seconds. So, you know that it, as it is the circular track, okay, as it is the circular track, the distance covered in one round, that will be the circumference, isn't it? Distance covered in one round will be the circumference. So, we can write distance covered in one round, Distance covered in one round will be the circumference of the track, isn't it? That is 2 pi r. So we can find out distance covered in 3.5 rounds. In one round, how you calculate 2 pi r? Therefore, in 3.5 rounds, how do you calculate 3.5? Multiplied by 2 pi r. 3.5 multiplied by 2 pi r. Understood why? There. As it is a circular track, distance covered in one round will be equal to the circumference of the track. Radius is given there. That's equal to 3.5 multiplied by 2 into value of pi. 22 upon 7 multiplied by 100 meter. Isn't it? So simplification 7 minus r. 0 0.5. Then you multiply that. What answer you will get? Multiply. The answer will be 5 to sir, 10. So 1 decimal point 10. That 0 cancel. You will get 1. 22 into 100. 2200 meter. This is the answer. Or which is the distance covered in 3.5 rounds. Now. One more question is asked there. What is the displacement? After 2 minutes 20 seconds. You know that after 2 minutes 20 seconds, the athlete covers 3.5 rounds. After 3.5 rounds, 
what will be the position of the athlete. You know that as the athlete starts his journey from here, isn't it? So if it is, he is going in this direction, one round, then second round also complete, third round complete, and three and half round, he will be just opposite, diametrically in the opposite direction. And let it be, he will be at the position, let it be B. Okay, so after 3.5 rounds, then what is the displacement? Displacement will be equal to AB. Isn't it? What is AB there? AB is the diameter of the circular track. So we can write displacement is equal to, therefore, displacement is equal to, understood the reason? Diameter of the track. Diameter of the track that's equal to 200 meter. Okay. The reason after 3.5 rounds, the person or the athlete will be diametrically opposite to the circular track. Then you have to find out the diameter. So after this, you will write the final answer. Isn't it? What's the final answer? Therefore, the distance covered 2200 meter and the displacement it is. 200 meter. Okay. See the second question. Joseph jogs from one end A to the other end B of a straight 300 meter road in 2 minutes 30 seconds and then turns around and jogs 100 meter back to the point C in another 1 minute. What are Joseph's average speeds and velocities in jogging? First question from A to B and second one from A to C. So we can draw this because the jogging track here it's a straight line. Okay, let us draw that straight line here. Isn't it? So from the point A then to the point B. And then comes back to C. Okay. Now. See here. What is the total length from A to B? Second question. From A to B the total length it is 300 meter. It comes back from B to C. It is 100 meter. Okay. So, from A to B, what is the distance covered? A to B, you know that. As it is in straight line, distance covered and the displacement will be the same. So, we can write from A to B, distance covered will be the same as that of displacement. Reason, it is Moving through the straight line. The direction remains the same. That is equal to 300 meter. Then. What is the time taken? Time taken. From A to B. Time taken is given as. 2 minutes 30 seconds. 2 minutes 30 seconds. That is equal to 2 minutes 120 seconds. 120 plus 30, 150 second. That is the time taken from A to B. So how will you find out the average speed? Average speed, we know the formula. Average speed is equal to total distance upon total time taken. Total distance upon total time taken. To cover that distance. That is equal to. What is the total distance? 300 meter. Total time taken. 150 second. That is equal to 2 meter per second. This is the average speed. From A to B. Then what is the average velocity there? So average velocity. From A to B. Average velocity is equal to the displacement upon time taken. Displacement upon 
time taken from A to B. What is the displacement? A to B already we are seeing. Distance covered and the displacement are the same because the direction is the same. So, displacement also equal to the distance covered. That is equal to 300 meter upon 150 seconds to meter per second. This is the answer of A. Second question, two sections A and B. So, A we have calculated. Is that clear? Now, we can find out what's the next one. After reaching B, he turns back, returns back and reaches to C. So, we have to find out the total distance covered when he moves from A to B and then B to C. That we can find out. Second one. For that, from A to B, B and then from where? B to C. Isn't it? What's the total distance? Total distance covered. A to B we know that it is 300 meter. Then B to C 100 meter. So the total distance covered it is 400 meter. Now. What is the displacement? Now, from B, he has reached C. So, displacement is only AC. So, we can write displacement is equal to, how do you find out? That is AB minus BC. That is 300 meter minus 100 meter will give you 200 meter. Only 200 meter is the displacement. Now see here, distance and displacement, they are different. There. First we can find out the average speed. Before that, what's the time taken? The total time taken? Time taken? From A to B, time taken it is 2 minutes 30 seconds. 30 second plus from B to C what is the time taken? It is 1 minute. That is equal to 2 minutes for 30 seconds means 150 seconds plus 60 seconds that is equal to 210 seconds. 210 seconds is the total time taken. Now average speed what is the formula? Average speed is equal to Total distance upon total time taken. So total distance covered upon total time. That's equal to what's the total distance? 400 meter upon 210 seconds. Find out 400 divided by 210. So 4, 0, 0 cancel. 40 divided by 21. So find out 40 divided by 21. 21 ones are 21. 119. Isn't it? Now how many times it is? 9 times. So, answer we get 1 point, it is 1.9, okay, that's enough, okay, 1.9 meter per second, 1.9 meter per second, that's the distance covered, okay, so here, see, 180, okay, this is 1, so 1 is not going, so, let it be. We can stop here 1.9 meter per second. Now we can find out average velocity. Average velocity. How do you find out displacement upon time? Upon time. 
What is the displacement? It is 200 meter upon 210 second. That is equal to 20 divided by 21. So find out what is 20 divided by 21? Divide. 20 divided by 21 it is not going. Okay. So 9, 189. is 5 okay so 100 and 110 you can write here then 5 105 okay so 0 0.95 meter per second so you can do the calculation you can do the division there so division can be done find out the answer so is that clear to you so these are the two questions which are given First from A to B, what is the average speed and average velocity? We got it as the same. Then A to B and then B to C. Here as the direction is changed, average speed and average velocity is not the same. So final answer you have to write. Now the third one. Abdul while driving to school computes the average speed for his trip to be 20 km per hour. That means from home to school. On his return trip along the same road from school to home, there is less traffic and the average speed is 30 km per hour. What is the average speed for Abdul's trip? So in some books I think it is given us 3 or 10 okay so let it be uh, it is 30 km per hour so what is the average speed for Abdul's trip so first we can write the distance from home to school it is not given so we can assume it is it is assume the distance from home to school let let the distance of let the distance from home to school. Let the distance from home to school be s kilometer. School be s kilometer. And the time taken that also not given, that also we can assume. Let T1 be the time taken. T1 be the time taken to reach or to travel from home to school. Travel from home to school. And T2 be the time taken and T2 be the time taken to travel or the return journey to travel from school to home. That is T1 time taken for the onward journey and T2 the return journey. So we know that speed is equal to distance upon time. Therefore, Time is equal to distance upon speed, isn't it? So time is equal to distance upon speed. Here we can find out time T1 is equal to what's the distance? Distance remains the same. S upon, let it be V1 and V1 is the speed from home, while going from home to school. And T2 is the time taken to reach home from school that is let it be s upon v2 but here we know that v1 that is the speed while going to school it is given as 20 isn't it 20 km per hour so speed will be s upon 20 r and the return journey it is s upon 30 r so t1 and t2 we got. Isn't it? 
From this, we can find out the total time. How do you find out the total time taken? That is T1 plus T2. So, we can continue that. Total time. T1 plus T2. Substitute the value of T1 and T2. What is T1? S upon S upon 20. Yes. S upon 20 R plus S upon 30 R. S upon 20 plus S upon 30 R. Isn't it? Calculate that. Find out. It will be 60. That is 3S plus 2S. Isn't it? R. That's equal to 5S upon 16 R. That's equal to 1 upon 12 R. 1 upon 12? Yes. R. Yes means the distance traveled. Isn't it? So, that can be written as 1 into S. It can be written as that's equal to S upon 12 R. This is the total time taken. Now, total distance travelled. What is the total distance travelled? Total distance travelled. Distance remains the same. Towards the school S, coming back also S. So, S plus S will give you 2S. 2S is the total distance traveled. And how do you find out the average speed then? Average speed is equal to total distance traveled upon total time taken. Average speed total distance traveled Total time taken upon total time taken. Total distance travelled is 2s. What's the total time taken? S upon 12. Isn't it? Kilometer per hour. That's equal to how to calculate 2s. 2s multiplied by as it's a fraction. 2s multiplied by 12 upon s. Isn't it? Kilometer per hour. S and s gets cancelled. We get 24 kilometer per hour. So, 24 kilometer per hour is the average speed. So, what's the question? What's the average speed of Abdul's trip? So, final answer we can write. Answer. Therefore, the average speed of Abdul strip is 24 kilometer per hour. Now the fourth question. Question 4. A motor boat starting from rest on a lake. So starting from rest, rest means you can write initial velocity or the initial speed. U is equal to 0 meter per second. There. Accelerates in a straight line at a constant rate of 3 meter per second square. Acceleration A is equal to 3 meter per second square. For 8 seconds. So what is the time taken then? T is equal to 8 seconds. How far does the boat travel during this time? So the position time relation. I have to find out the distance travel. That is position time relation. S is equal to ut plus half a t square. Isn't it? That's equal to what is u? 0 into 8 plus half into 3 into h into h. That's equal to 0 plus 96. This is meter. That's equal to 96 meter. So, how do you write the final statement then? Therefore, 
the boat travels a distance of 96 meters. So you can write therefore the boat travels a distance of 96 meter. This is the answer. This is a direct substitution. Now question 5. A driver of a car traveling at 5, 52 km per hour applies brakes and accelerates uniformly in the opposite direction. So the car stops in 5 seconds. Another driver going at 34 km per hour in another car applies his brake slowly and stops in 10 seconds. On the same graph paper, plot the speed versus time graph for the two cars. Which of the two cars traveled farther after the brakes were applied? So this is a question for you to do. And here as it is given in the question, you have to draw the graph in the, in the same graph paper. Okay. Then find out the distance traveled. Okay. The distance covered by the two cars. And then compare it. Okay. Same way, question 6. Also, your assignment, your homework questions. And now I am going to solve question 7 here. Question 7, I am going to solve. A boat is gently dropped from a height of 20 meter. If its velocity increases uniformly at the rate of 10 meter per second square, with what velocity will it strike the ground? After what time will it strike the ground? So, solve question 7. So, what is given there? We can write initial velocity. You know that it is 0 meter per second. Now, next what is given? Acceleration A is given as 10 meter per second square. And what about the distance covered? It is 20 meter. Now, first we can find out the time. That's the question which is asked, isn't it? So, uh, what is it? Uh, after what time will it strike the ground? And also, with what velocity will it strike the ground? Both you have to find out. And first we can find out the time. Let it be using the Position time relation. S is equal to ut plus half a t square. Position time relation. That find out the time. 20 is equal to 0 into t plus half into 10 into t square. Isn't it? So 20 is equal to 0 into t. 0. Here we get 5. That is 5 t square. t square is equal to 20 upon 5 that is equal to 4. Therefore, what is the time t? 4 that is 2 seconds. Isn't it? t square 4 so time t is equal to 2 seconds. You can substitute the, you can give the units also there. Now next, we have to find out with what velocity and which Equation we can use. The first equation, let it be V is equal to U plus A T. What is U? 0 plus 10 into 2. U plus A T. That's equal to 0 plus 20. That's equal to 20 meter per second. That's a velocity. So final answer, what will you write? The ball will strike the ground. The ball will strike the ground. The ball will strike the ground after two seconds with a velocity of 20 meter per second. This is the answer. The ball will strike the ground after two seconds with a velocity of 20 meter per second.
Now we are going to solve question 10, which is the last question in the exercise. 10th question. An artificial satellite is moving in a circular orbit of radius 42,250 km. Calculate its speed if it takes 24 hours to revolve around the Earth. So what is to write the data first to write? Radius R is equal to, can write radius R is equal to 42,250 kilometer. Next what is given? Time taken. That is time taken T. How much? 24 R. What do you have to find out? You have to find out the speed. Speed is equal to distance upon time. Here, the artificial satellites revolving, which the path is circular. So we can write it is the circumference upon time. That is equal to 2 pi r upon t. So Substitute the values R and T already given. So 2 into pi value 22 upon 7 radius 42,250 times 24 kilometer per hour. Do the simplification and then calculation. Two ones are twelve. Again, two six are two eleven are, isn't it? And forty-two thousand two hundred and fifty with six. Okay. Is it possible? No. Again, you can simplify this. Two three are so multiply twenty-one thousand one hundred and twenty-five with eleven. Isn't it? Then divide with 21. So 23 divide with 21. Then you will get the answer. You will get the answer as find out. You can find out. Divide and find out the answer. You have to calculate. Okay. I know it's division, you can do it very easily, isn't it? Or I have to do here also 21, 21. Okay? Here I will show it. Dot decimal after decimal one zero four this four hundred eighty four. So somebody will get the answer one one zero six five point four kilometer per hour. That's the answer. So final answer. What will you write? Therefore, speed of the satellite. Therefore. Speed of the satellite is eleven thousand sixty five point four kilometer per hour. So these are the numericals from your exercise. The numericals which I not solved and I told you to do as homework. That is question. In exercise, isn't it? Exercise question 5 
that you have to plot the graph and then solve it. Then question 6 and question 8. These three questions try to solve it and as I already told you have to practice example questions and the question answers will be sent to you. Okay, thank you.